Blake, on Investor Talk, you were telling the group of investors how you're really no longer an exploration play, you're a supply chain story. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I think that's the the beauty of these projects, right? In in that um, you know we can move quickly, we can get product to market, and and as we do that, of, of course, there's still a a team of of experienced um, you know geologists, explorationists, engineers, all these people that are going to continue to grow the project and make it better and better. But the the projects are doing well. The market is interested in the lithium space because they want to know how they're going to get the product, uh, you know, to the EV market to the battery market. They want to know how are these global initiatives and zero emission initiatives going to work. Um, and so these projects are really problem solving uh, a supply chain issue. And and so for us, it's it's always going to be about looking to be opportunistic and grow the project and all that kind of stuff. But the story will grow and evolve into less about you know what every single drill hole update is because we can assume they're good. You know, it's a great ballot. It's a beautiful district. And we're going to find more and more. That's kind of a foregone conclusion. The question will be, you know, who is going to take the material? Where is that going to go? How is that going to supply that industry? And, you know, how are we going to be a, a cog in the wheel? And, and I think that's a that's a, a more compelling story. Um, and, and, that, and I think, you know, answering that question earlier was about how do you deal with the Lasan curve? How do you deal with the typical engineering issues and, and, and development issues? Well, the question is, you don't spend a lot of time in development. You don't spend a lot of time building these projects. You get them up and running and you feed to the market and 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 the questions are no longer, well, what are your cost overruns going to be or what, you know, what are your timelines going to be? It's they're they're, you know, it's going to be on time, it's going to move quickly, and it and it's going to feed a, a starving market. And I think one of the most exceptional competitive advantages that lithium ionic has is that you're very cost effective to build and you can recover everybody's investment basically in 14 months. Did I hear you properly? Yeah, that's right. I mean, so, and, and that's again, using heavily discounted pricing for our engineering study. We, we put out that PA, you know, to, as a moment in time, but it's a $1.6 billion US post-tax NPV. It's 121% post-tax IRR and it's a 14 month payback. But you know, I'm, I'm more bullish on where lithium pricing is going to go in, in 25, 26. You know, I don't believe that we've solved this, solved this supply problem and, and that, you know, the whole world is going to move to a different form of, of uh, you know, EV and, and battery storage and that we've just, we solved that in a year. Uh, I, I don't, I don't really buy into that. So, um, and there really isn't a bunch of lithium supply to come online. So the de demand will stay there. The supply will not keep up and we'll see, prices stay high. And, and so I actually think when we get into a position to produce in, in you know, 2025, 2026, um, we're going to be selling product into into a really strong lithium market. Uh, and we'll pay this product project off, you know, sub a year, um, which is spectacular. Well, I was just going to ask you about, speaking of spectacular, the very promising numbers from your PEA that you just cited. Can you tell us how lithium ionic, you know, compares to your competitor, uh, since you put these numbers out, yeah, I think that um, <clears throat> when when we look at this, it's a moment in time, and it's only going to get better. Uh, we we have a resource now that's still growing. Um, this was call it you know phase one of our approach. It, it will keep getting better. There will be a phase two, a phase three. It'll it'll grow into kind of world class scale production. Um, I think when we when I look at our our, our competition and our peer group, what we're doing is actually moving to production. You know, we're not just drilling for the sake of saying, well, one day, you know, we'll be all grown up. Like we're actually working at being that now. Um, and so while we drill and while we grow these resources, which again is is low cost and 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 a fairly straightforward process, um, you know, we're actually going through the process of submitting for permits this month, you know, actually securing power, which was which was a, a press release we put out this week. Um, you know, acquiring land rights, like all, all the things we need to do, uh, including de-risking the, the the financing of the project, which is things we're working on right now. These are all the things we need to do, get in line and 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 get in place to be able to be in a, a production scenario faster than all of our peer group. And I think that's going to separate us, particularly as this lithium market bounces back, um, although it's still strong, but as it bounces back from you know where it was a couple months ago. Um, We'll, we'll be in uh, you know a, a league of our own because there just won't be more projects coming online at the same time. 
Let's talk about your future projections. So you've got a definitive feasibility environmental impact assessment anticipated by the end of the year. Uh, what are your next steps for lithium ionic immediately? Yeah, I mean, we've got some key key catalysts to come here now, right? We, we are going to submit for our permits now. Um, we're going to uh, push for that full feasibility, likely Q1 actually of next year. Um, you know, we want to be in a construction uh, position by summer of next year. Uh, we we want to bring on a key uh, project manager who's going to help us advance and build this project. I mean, we're really aligning all the things now that are showing that we're getting serious about building the project. Uh, just this week, we put out that we've secured hydroelectric power to the site. Um, and, and you know, we're going to continue to have drilling in areas like Salinas and ben, Bandera, the Aichinga area. These things are going to not only show that we're moving towards construction uh, and, and development production, uh, but of course, we're still growing the resource in behind it. And I think that's a key factor for us to show that we're a world-class scale project, world-class opportunity to kind of go on top of some pretty strong economics we already showed in our PEA. So, I, I mean, we're going to be newsy, um, but all the news is really, really going to be impactful, meaningful um, uh, key steps in getting into production. Yeah, you do. Uh, the Bandera, you're in a very strategic uh, position. Uh, the Bandera project is in the Lithium Valley. Uh, how do you see Lithium Ionics role in shaping and leading the lithium industry in Brazil? Because you're basically going to be the next lithium producer. Yeah, I, I, I think we have one of the strongest teams uh, in the world as far as you know, actually discovering, finding more, growing more. Um, but there is a lot of good work going on around us. Um, Sigma's done some phenomenal work. They've grown a, a massive deposit and then gone into production. And that's why they have a value somewhere between three and five billion, depending on the day, um, and, which is the value gap we want to close. Um, but I think more is being learned about this belt. Uh, there's more to discover. And we think we have a real key uh, advantage in, in a strong team that that is uh, knows the belt well, has been in Munich Dry for over 40 years, um, and and just you know, a real competitive advantage when it comes to pushing this project into kind of world class um, um, category. Well, many people who participated in this morning's investor talk commented that they also agreed that your management team was extraordinary. Blake, we wish you ongoing success, and for everybody interested in learning more about Lithium Ionic, please go to their website.